come up with for uh, what recovery is? Well, same, the same type of recovery doesn't wouldn't affect everyone the same. So there has to be different types of recovery. For different for different people, so individualized. But there are some basic factors in the experience of recovery. Just as a backstory, I do this exercise in, with our families. And they come up with a whole lot of characteristics for what recovery looks like. And then I tell them that it's for them, just like it is for their addict. That recovery is really finding a healing part in your life with this disease. So go on and uh, tell me what you think. <laughs> So talkative, and all of a sudden you want to say something. Long term. It's long term. So, like the disease is chronic and lifelong, this is a lifelong process. I'd also say short term. What say what you mean? I would also oh just meaning that because you have to deal with it minute by minute, day by day. Okay, so we call that mindful practice, which is really noticing what's going on in the moment. Absolutely. Good. Oh, we got a long time. We were talking for like five minutes. <laughs> you was talking about kind of like a terrorist, like I'm, I'm, in the beginning there's certain concerns you have to address, like like physical addiction, create you know um, compulsion, and as you transition go longer, maybe there's maybe you're working on um, building your life back up and you know and, and dealing with other concerns related to you know, emotional. Rebuild the family, rebuilding your relationship yeah. with your co-workers, that sort of thing. And as you go along, it's interesting. Different yeah. concerns that have to be. I mean, there are 12 steps in the 12-step program. The ninth step, the eighth and the ninth steps, deal with amends. So I tell families that it's coming, but don't hold your breath because it's going to be a while before they pay you back and before they make it right. But part of recovery is taking responsibility for what I've done. More knowledge. Knowledge, information, treatment. Yeah, whatever treatment looks like, and I'm putting 12 steps up because that's my orientation. There's a lot of evidence that it works. There's other methodologies that are effective with, with treatment, cognitive behavioral interventions, dialectical behavioral therapy is now uh, well researched in the way people, uh, dis they're able to reduce their distress. So we call that distress reduction. More. I want to call it acceptance or surrender. But you yeah, know, well, that's, all. that's the first step, which is really overcoming the denial that I don't have a problem, that I can drink, that I can smoke a little weed, you know, sort of that basic. And then on every level, you know, accepting I have a disease, accepting that I have this physiology, accepting that I can transmit this to my children with my genes. I mean, you know, a whole series of surrenders that starts with I'm powerless over my substance. More. Spirituality? Yeah. And spirituality, you know, gets kind of a bad rap. God, religion. I think spirituality is anything other than me. Because this is a disease of self-centeredness. And recovery is really about me and you. And us. And going to a group. And working with other people. And growing from your own narrow turf to what's important in your life. Yeah. And if God's in there, Go get him. Her. <laughs> One more. There's a lot more, but we'll we'll uh, we'll move on. There's the real issue is that you take the drug out of the person and they don't get better, they get worse at first. That's the challenge that you face in the legal system. That's a challenge you face with your clients. You tell them, you know, shape up, do this or you're gonna go to jail. And they put the drug down and they feel worse. They have anxiety, they don't know what to do with it. They have family dysfunction, they don't know what to do with it. They have guilt and shame, always. They have frustration. They have to uh, go to drug court and they have to go to the job and they have to go to treatment. They have to show up for urines, they have to pay for them. You know, it's a complicated process in people who really don't have the ability to self soothe So there's a lot of challenges associated. Uh, the key points that I want to, uh, we got most of them, but it's really identifying with others so that you're not alone, sharing and commiserating, which really 
is both helping other people but also benefiting from others' experiences, realizing that you're not alone. I think that a power greater than oneself, whether it's the group or nature or some form of uh, God, is, is a helpful tool. Certainly the 12 steps are based in it. And then internalizing a sense of creating comfort from chaos. And it's really, that's the hardest work. Families have to be involved in the process of recovery for it to be successful. I I'll say it differently. It's really very beneficial for families to be involved, especially with young people. Um, Even the ones that are addicted? Family members who are addicted, big problem, isn't it? So you have a kid in your court or in your practice, and uh, the parents are coming in loaded. I, I gave a talk to uh, uh, the, the uh, family court system in Vegas, and that's the biggest problem is that they have parents' custody issues, and the mother comes in, you know, who's, who's on prescription medication. And they asked me what to do about that. And I said, how about you bring the doctor in and ask he or she to explain why it is that he or she is prescribing drugs and the person is overly sedated. What do you think? <laughs> It won't be very popular for a while, but you know, how are we going to change this? We have to do unpopular things, we have to take unpopular positions or nothing's going to change. So, I agree with you, that when we have a family, let's say, I mean I have somebody in treatment now who's an alcoholic, and he's going home to an alcoholic wife, very complicated. Or a kid who has parents who take painkillers, very, it's much more complicated. We try and take that person in a healthful way out of that household. I think in a lower uh, economic place than you're thinking. Probably. Our people aren't addicted to prescription drugs as much, or parents, I should say. Yeah. They're addicted to heroin and methamphetamine. Yeah, yeah. well, methamphetamine is it's not like it's cheap. Heroin's obviously cheaper than the prescription drugs. And yeah. we talked about just sort of the, the trend, as I'm sure many of you know, is that people start with prescription drugs, especially young people. And those are expensive, so then they go to the cheaper form, which is available at the same place, the dealer, and now they're addicted to heroin. And they're not using the needle mostly. They can smoke it. They can snort it. And they can get intensely high and intensely addicted.